Good afternoon, guys. It's uh, Raven Tactical here. Um, you may hear goose in the background. You may hear chickens and ducks. It's just kind of that process of living on a homestead. Um, I wanted to do a video that follows up with kind of some things that I know have some knowledge base in. Um, AR mags, right? And there are so many different companies and so many different things that people make in them. Um, over the last, ever since I got really heavily into shooting, which started out in 15 years ago, roughly. Um, I started doing uh, ARs slowly and kind of packed, you know, got some magazines as I went. Found some cool ones that were sitting around. Cool, that was neat. Um, but I found some ones that are duds and I found some companies that I never even heard of that turned out to be pretty cool. Um, this one right here I'm gonna start out with is the very, I guess the bread and butter of magazines. The USGI ones, and it still has the stupid, like, you know, from the pre ban era where it says restricted for government use only. Like, okay. And that was during the 94 wonderful ban, and maybe we'll see another one again. So, these USGI mags are everywhere. Um, the Marines use it, Army uses it, Air Force, Navy. And the big thing with these, um, you can find them at surplus stores, gun shows, you know, your veteran buddy's house, he might sell you some. The big thing with these is watch the followers, um, and I've already tilted this, just playing around with it, and you can pop it back. So the original ones that I've seen, the oldest ones had like a black follower, they went to a green, they went to a tan. And I think the newest one they're at is a purple. And the purple actually offsets the round on the opposite side. And what I mean is that these are double stack rounds. So your last round is now going to be, I believe it's going to be on the left side. And it's, it's one of those things that people feel around in the dark for. However, the green and black are kind of the older ones. So you're going to get a couple things if you're buying them used. One, the springs might be worn out. And the tilt followers, especially this. Yeah, that's why they keep you know modifying the new followers. Um, if you can get them cheap enough, cool. If you can get Magpul makes replacements for it, the ghost. Magpul makes replacements for it, uh, followers, and basically you strip the mag, put the new follower in. You can get new springs for it too. Really, with mags being about ten dollars a piece, I mean by the time you rebuild it, maybe you're better off buying something else. But if you get into the same issue where we have a magazine restriction ban, well, these become gold. I believe in 2012, Cheaper Than Dirt was famous for stopping people's orders, telling them that they're out of stock, replenishing their inventory with people's orders, and then flipping around, turning it around, tried selling these for $99 a piece. And that's the USGI mags. We have another standard, which is your mag pole. This one is a... Gen 2, I believe. Standard thing. Magpul's awesome. I really enjoy Magpul. I know some people get all up and out of shape about, oh, in, you know, in cold environments they could crack or they could shatter. I don't know. I I live in a cold environment. I haven't had issues with it. The followers work. I mean, you get some pretty cool things. You get a keeper if you're going to, you know, store them long term, which is cool. You can use it on the bottom, kind of, too, as a grab piece. Um, I'm just going to toss this. Side. Magpul works a couple different generations. You can get ones with windows in them, you can get ones with not. You can get a 40 rounder, and Magpul works. Um, I mean, everybody should be pretty familiar with Magpul. Uh, really, too, if you watch Paul Meadows, uh, Paul Meadows Armory, if you watch their website, you can sometimes get a bolt carrier and 10 mags for about 150 bucks. And Paul Meadows doing that just to get these things out in case I think a magazine ban is coming. But yeah, so you can stock up cheap on them. Another one that's kind of interesting is these hex mags. And I found these to be at Tyson's. And you can get different plate followers for these too. So if let's say you have a 300 uh, blackout, you can get ones that even say 300 blackout on them, um, which is cool. But you can also get different color four plates, which if you have a specific caliber magazine, you can do that too. Um, I recently bought these and I was testing these. They run, 
They're a little unique with the design. They have a good grip texture to them. Um, I can't really say too much more about them, but it's overall, I would say it's a fairly decent thing. They cost about 12 bucks. Um, new, I wouldn't pay more than 12 bucks if the store is trying to sell them. Fairly good deal, and that's Hex Mag. This one is, I'm trying to look, CDIR, and I'm trying to think if this is the goofy one. This is the kind of a goofy mag that I got, I believe it came in a kit of something. This one, I don't think they work all that well. They're kind of a cheap mag, in my opinion, and this is the one that kind of like gets stuck or stuck rounds and everything. It's a little goofy. Um, they don't normally get my recommendation on it, but you know, it's if it works for you, if it works. But didn't really care for these. And just to show you with the USGI mag again, this like blue purplish follower um, with the tan coyote is probably the, the newest generation. And like I was saying, if you notice that this ridge here, it's gonna put your last round on the opposite side now. So if you were doing heavily training or you're getting into that, where you're basically doing everything by feel, it will take a little bit of a learning curve to realize where your, where your round count is. One of the newest ones I found is Lancer, and they're not like new around. Lancer takes kind of what Magpul does. You have a polymer mag, but then they also take the USGI side of it and give you like a metal metal follower type. Um, I think it's kind of the best of both worlds. You get kind of a lighter mag, uh, especially Lancer doing different colors. Like I just got clear, um, but you get maybe where the the weakness maybe in a mag pull possibly could be. I haven't seen it yet, but where the weakness could be. Lancer kind of fixed it by having a metal lips and metal follower thing. It's pretty cool. I just recently got two and we were running with them. They seem to run just fine. And then I believe this one is... I'm going to take it back. I'm going to take back what I said about the CVIR mags. I was thinking of Fox mags. And... These work, this is obviously Mrs. Ravens, um, and it's got a nice like ranger plate if you want to call it that, so that you can, most magazines are supposed to drop out, but if you're shooting for a while, or you're doing a course, things get dirty, things get gummed up, and your magazine may not, so you may also run into an issue where if you get a significant jam, your magazine may be locked up and you have to rip her out. That's what these are for. Um, so I take what I said back about the previous one. These do run. These do work. Um, and I didn't bring it out here because I think I got rid of it. But there was a magazine called Fox Company. And not good at all. I mean, they this very, very cheap polymer. Um, not great. They work. Um, Mrs. Raven uses them in her pistol AR. And overall, I think it's pretty good. I did happen to find at the very bottom of this box... Um, Another one that I was talking about was this tan one. So again, a tan follower, which was the generation right above green. So you had green, tan, and now you're on you basically a bluish purple. And I did also find in the bottom, which is what I was originally thinking was these Fox mags. Um, overall, I don't really care for them. It's just a cheaper plastic. Um, I did have a lot of things like jam up. Not all of them fit in every magazine well, which is also kind of strange. So I don't know if they don't have a, they're not mill spec. Um, some people's magazine wells did not fit. Like you're sitting there going, oh, okay. So then you just put it in someone else's and it fits. Um, I didn't care for them. They didn't really run all that well. And since I wanted to standardize with all my magazines should work with all my guns. Um, I've been putting these off to the side to either give them away, I believe I gave a couple away to some people that maybe didn't have anything. Um, so, yeah, uh, hopefully that kind of makes sense to keep an eye out for. Uh, the top three mags I would probably say I would go for 
I'd say Lancers are kind of becoming my favorite, but I don't have a ton of them. Um, I like the fact that it was clear, but Lancers and Magpul are my top two choices. Um, USGI mags, there's nothing you can do, uh, nothing that's wrong with them. If, if you can get them cheap, don't go to the gun show and you find the one that's all beat up and the guy goes, oh, it's cool, it's rusty, it's from Vietnam, I want $80. I'm like, ah, no, I'm, I'm not here to collect somebody's, excuse me, somebody's garbage. But if you can get these USGI mags, especially these new ones, for about 10 bucks, um, then yeah, you're, you're, you're set, you know. Don't overpay for mags, but make sure you have plenty on hand. Because the reality is, with a magazine ban coming, you're going to be stuck if you don't have it. And having five mags and one rifle, that's not enough. You need at least, my opinion, for every rifle you have, you should have at least ten mags. Ten mags keeps you pretty, pretty stout and ready. That way you have, one, your combat loadout for yourself, and you have ones to replace that in case things break. These are a disposable item in the military, and that is the reason why. If they break, you throw them out. You don't sit there and try to fix it in battle. You grab to the next one. So with that, hopefully that makes sense. It's Raven Tactical. I'm out.